Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Ivan, WC2S. And he has a question about an antenna that he wants to make, and he wants to modify a two-meter uh, antenna for this particular service he wants to listen to. Now, before we jump into answering his question, I want to pay a special thank you to Fletcher Smith, who is one of my newest patrons. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, please go to patreon.com slash ke0og. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and click like. Now, let's take a look at Ivan's question. He says, I'm building a simple ground plane antenna to receive the LORA satellites, okay? The frequencies of the satellite vary from about 401 megahertz to about 437 megahertz. The PDF says to bend the radials of this ground plane antenna to 45 degrees down. Well, and he's got a few more questions that we'll answer right here. Um, the uh, Okay, let's take a look at the ground plane, a two meter ground plane. And it has, okay, this is 19 inches for two meters. These are 19 inches. Now, if you look at the thing strictly from the side, it's going to look a little different. You're going to, this is strictly from the side, and you're going to have some sort of a little plate here, and your radials are going to be bent down um, at 45, 45 degree angles from the horizontal. And you may ask, why? Well, in fact, Ivan did ask why. And the answer for that is if you have a radial out like this, the antenna input impedance is about 30 ohms. Okay, so you have a mismatch. However, the more you bend down the antenna, this goes up. And if you bend it to about 45, you're on the order of 50 ohms, which is a better match to your cable. So that's the only reason they're bent down. Okay, now you might ask, can't you do that with a HF antenna? Sure. You can build it on the top of a mound and run your radials down from it, but it's a lot harder to do. And so a, a ground-mounted radial, um, here's some trees or whatever, um, has got ground-mounted radials and has an input impedance of about 30 ohms. So there are multiple things you can do here. Um, you can add a little loading, which is little reactants. It'll make the SWR closer to one to one, or you can put a tuner here, um, or just accept the penalty of being 30 ohms. That's three fifths, that's 60, so it'd be about a 1.6 to one SWR. Okay, now, he asks, how long should he build his antenna? Okay, he wants his antenna to receive from 401 to 437 megahertz. Well, for a wire antenna, which is the same thing as a piece of wire sticking straight up, okay, and he's not gonna need very strong wire, because these are really short antennas. You take that and divide it by 468, which gives you your wavelength over two in feet. Okay, this works out to 0 0.86 uh, feet, which is 10 and one quarter inches. Okay, that's down here. Now we look over here, divide this by 468, and we get that this is 0 0.93 feet. 
and that's about 11 um, and a quarter inches about. Okay, now these distances are fairly close to each other, but they are, this is 10% more, actually slightly more than, 10% more than this. Okay, actually slightly less. It's about 10% more than this. 10% is fairly wide. For example, if you're making an antenna to go from 3.5 megahertz up to 4, note that this is a 500 kilohertz band or 0.5 megahertz. The bandwidth is greater than a tenth of this right here. So you're going to find an antenna, let's say you, you make it 10 and 3 quarters for being in the middle. The fact of the matter is that the antenna is going to do two things on you. Okay, first, if you pick that uh, uh, 10 and 3 quarter, you're going to find, uh, let's assume you get the 50 ohms on there you're going to find that your SWR looks something like this. Now you can model the antenna to see what it is, but out here in the ends, it could be greater than 3 to 1. Okay. So a single antenna like this may not work very well for you. So what you can do, there's a couple things that you can do. Wide range antenna tuner, but at these frequencies, a normal antenna tuner is not going to work well. You could put up two antennas and switch between them, or you could use something called a discone, which I covered in a recent video. A discone is literally a cone and some wires coming out at the bottom. This is attached to the center lead. These are attached to the negative lead. It is a balanced antenna. And, well, no, it's not a balanced antenna. These can be grounded up here. Uh, but the point is that you can look at, and this can be replaced by just wires like this. You can also purchase discones um, for $100 or so that will cover uh, a wider range. Discones tend to cover a very wide range with a low SWR. A low SWR means that the most information is getting to uh, your radio receiver. Okay, so you've got a couple options here that you can go through. Um, I would recommend the discone if the antenna, if the signal is really wideband or something like that. Um, discones are easy to get. You don't need to get a discone that goes all the way down to two meters, which most of them do, but it wouldn't hurt to do that. Or you can build the quarter wave antenna for the center frequency of that, which would be about 10 and three quarters inches long. The radials are that size too. One easy way to do that is by taking a little SO239 connector, a little titch of uh, uh, a soldering flux, and use some bent coat wire, uh, uh, coat hanger wires uh, on that. Or for that matter, just like, you know, 10 or 12 gauge uh, copper house wire. You can make just about anything that you'd like to make out of that. You can also make what is known as a coaxial antenna. Now, a coaxial antenna is this. Here is 10 and 3 quarter inches. And what you have done is peeled away the braid, peeled away the braid all the way down here. You don't even have to cut the center out, but peel the braid back 10 and 3 quarter inches. And it takes a little bit of uh, patience to do that, but you can get this at 10 and 3 quarter, this at 10 and 3 quarter, and um, then wrap some electrical tape around this so it 
maintains its dimensional characteristics. Let me show you such an antenna that I made for this antenna right here is made to capture ADS-B signals. And so it's quite short. This right here, and then I peeled the stuff back, the braid down to here. And so you can uh, get, uh, you know, your braid is that same length right there. And I wrapped it in that. And this antenna can be uh, put anywhere and uh, put at whatever uh, orientation works best for you. Very simple antenna to make. And this works, works very well. So there you have it, some options. Uh, if you would like to become a uh, financial supporter of this channel, you can go to decastlercom slash support. Please be sure to click like and subscribe. And until we next meet, 73.